Hey folks, welcome back to Ecuador, Sueño de Vida in the Cloud Forest. Today we're on our neighbor's land. Uh, it is a giant heart of palm farm, okay? So we've got uh, 180 hectares of heart of palm. 30 hectares is for sale. So let's talk about this heart of palm crop called the palmito here and why this is so ripe for diversifying into an agroforestry system. So let's talk a little bit about, first of all, the problems with this farm, and then we're going to talk about its amazing potential, okay? So some of the problems are, first of all, ecological problems abound. Um, everything here is on the same level. These little palm trees here behind me, that's about as, t as tall as they go. Now that's not natural. They're harvested when they're very small, and the stalk is cut out, this little stalk here is cut out, and inside there's a soft white heart which you might be familiar with called the heart of palm, right? You Maybe you've put it on your salad or something, okay? You might think, oh my God, like how much heart of palm do people eat to have, you know, millions of these things? There's 15,000 hectares alone in Northwest Ecuador uh, devoted to the heart of palm cultivation. It's one of the very few places where it grows. That's why, okay? You need a lot of rain to grow these things, very special climate conditions that we have here. So with all of the trees being pretty much on the same level, we have a limited amount of biodiversity, right? Not that many species of birds, not that many species of insects. Um, the plants are very crowded in. They're planted at every one and a half meters because they are planted so, they are harvested so young. And then what happens is um, because they're so crowded, they're prone to a certain type of beetle that gets inside and lays its eggs and then the larvae eat the tree. So because they're crowded in, they need more pesticides, okay? So there's two big problems. And then I think that that makes a nice bridge to the human problem, right? The ecological problem, obviously, is of monoculture, lack of biodiversity, and a need for pesticides right off the bat. The human problem, the social problems are, are much more interesting and even more so. So because all the trees are on one level, we don't have a lot of tall trees in here where we have large birds. Large birds prey on snakes here in the cloud forest. So it's a big problem for the workers here. Snake bites are very, very common when they're in here harvesting these trees. Um, another really sad thing is, is there's nothing to eat. I mean, seriously, think about it. 180 hectares of a crop and guys come in here to work and there's nothing to eat. I always see the, the palmito workers, the guys who harvest in the general stores in town, they're buying like cans of tuna and bringing in little containers of rice. Like it's like a big wheat farm, like a big monoculture farm. There's just nothing to eat in here, okay? So you might think, oh man, like the owner, he must be doing great. He's got this big farm. He's got these guys who are working probably pretty cheap. No, we know the owner. He's a great guy. He's in his seventies. He's selling 30 hectares of the property because he's trying to finance some sort of retirement for himself. Um, Heart of Palm is a commodity here in Ecuador and like everything else on the commodity market, the price goes up and down, it fluctuates, the farmer's at the mercy of it. Uh, there's certainly monopoly price setters, there's, there's opportunistic middlemen. So there's all of these problems with the commodity market that uh, really affect this, this crop. So those are some of the problems. So let's go in a little bit closer um, and take a look at, quiet doggies, and take a look at what are some of the advantages would be to diversifying this system with uh, agroforestry. Okay, so as you can see, it's, it's almost like a labyrinth. It's like a maze walking through the rows and rows and rows of palmito. But there are many advantages, more advantages than disadvantages. So I'm going to go over them one by one. Number one advantage is the presence of an interim canopy. This is really important. We don't have a high canopy, but there is canopy, meaning that the ground is kept shaded and is kept protected from the compacting force of the raindrops that come down in the rainy season, which is like Blitzkrieg, monsoon on the ground that always that will compact the soil when the ground is bare. So there is canopy. Canopy is creating shade and protecting the soil. Number two, plenty of organic matter, plenty of biomass for chopping and dropping. So you can see here that the soil is actually in pretty good shape. So those are some major advantages, okay? We already have canopy. We already have biomass for mulching and we already have some pretty good soil. We don't have any of these things in the pastures that we've been regenerating. In a pasture, you're regenerating from scratch. You've got open sky, hot sun, pounding rain, compacted soil, and no biomass. So this is, this is a treat. It would be a treat to come in and diversify. Now, how would we do that? Well, let's talk about that next. 
Okay, so you're not gonna believe this. I just sat down, turned on my camera, and look, I found a rusty tuna can. So point made about there being nothing to eat here in this farm, okay? So let's talk about diversifying it because that's really important. So these trees, there's a palmito stalk right here, yeah? Um, they're doing a lot of good things. We don't wanna take them all out. They're providing the shade, they're providing the biomass, they're protecting the soil, right? Chop and drop. How, and this is what you're not gonna believe. This is crazy. So these trees, when they are left to mature for four, four, only four years, they start producing one of the most nutritious foods in the tropics. In Costa Rica, it's called pejabi. Here in Ecuador, it's called chantaduro. Also in Colombia, uh, it's called the peach palm. And I'm gonna take you into the kitchen. I'm gonna show you peach palm in just a minute as soon as we get out of this farm. However, it is one of the most nutritious fruits in all of the tropics and it's being sacrificed to grow palmi heart of palm, which is like a salad garnish. This is what the commodities market does to the world. This is insane. Okay, so if we leave every 12 meters, every 12 meters we leave one of these palmito trees and we take out the rest, yeah, what's in between, now we're creating space to diversify, okay? So why 12 meters? Well, at 12 meters, that's the optimum, de optimum density to still ensure good yields of the very nutritious fruit of the peach palm fruit up to eight tons per hectare per year. That's twice as much as monoculture wheat. That's twice as much as monoculture rice. Think about that. Like, what are we eating in the world and what could we be eating? Much more nutritious things, yeah? Okay. So every 12 meters, we leave one of these trees to grow to maturity and produce the peach palm fruit, okay? In between, now we've got 12 meter spacing. This is big. You can fit multiple other species, like heirloom varieties of cacao for more uh, cash value, um, other nutritious fruit trees for more food security. So we're thinking turmeric, aroma nasi and al cacao, and at least 20 to 30 percent of other trees for people to come in and have something to eat for the diversity of the system you never want to sacrifice all your diversity just to have one or two cash crops right 70 percent cash crops 30 percent diversity is great for an agroforestry system as kind of like a benchmark okay very little maintenance would need to be done in here compared to regenerating a pasture if you're trapping and dropping, harvesting your biomass efficiently. The grass and the ground covers won't overwhelm your saplings. That's huge. We pay a lot of money. Okay, it's very expensive, right, to regenerate a pasture in those early years before they start producing because there's a lot of maintenance. Here we won't have that problem nearly as much. Yeah, so lots of advantages. So let's go into the kitchen and let's take a look at the amazing peach palm. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the nutrition and the potential for this amazing fruit, the peach palm. So here they are, cooked up, just uh, boiled in a pressure cooker for about 40 minutes. Um, very simple. Not surprisingly, with this beautiful orange color, they taste a lot like pumpkin. Um, you cannot eat them raw. They do need to be cooked because they're very hard, like a squash, uh, even though they hang from palm trees. So at any rate, some of the most important nutritional things about this food is it's a true staple. It's a superfood and it's a staple. So superfoods are known for having really high nutrient densities, right? And staples are kind of like wheat, corn, things you eat for calories, but might not have the most, uh, the highest nutritional value. So these are both, these are amazing. They have omega-3s, which is incredible. Uh, most plant foods don't have omega-3s, uh, and most people have way too much omega-6 in their diets from seed oils. Omega-3s usually come more from fish, so it's unusual to find a plant food that has omega-3s, and um, peach palm does, so that's incredible. Um, it's got protein. So screw that lab-based meat or lab-made meat or whatever it is and the Impossible Burgers and the soybeans and Bill Gates and the whole thing. Peach palm, okay, is really the way to go. Now, you might wonder, like, why have I never heard of this if this is so amazing? And, like, how can I get it in my country? Well, another great thing about this peach palm is that chontaduro, pejiabi, wherever you call it, wherever you are, is it can also be dried and made into flowers. And the flower is very delicious, and you can substitute it for wheat flour, and um, you can make breads with it. You can make uh, very amazing gluten-free pancakes, all sorts of really great gluten-free things you can make with peach palm flour. So that's a fantastic potential for how this food can be uh, shared with the rest of the world where it doesn't grow. But 
first things first. I mean, one of the most important things, I think, is for the people in the countries where peach palm grows in Colombia, in Ecuador, in Brazil, to reclaim the peach palm as one of their like most nutritious foods. Uh, so, you know, really important thing to keep in mind if you're up there in the developed world in uh, the global north is, um, you know, we don't want to export all of the peach palm, right? Because people here really should eat it first. Uh, but it would also make an absolutely tremendous export, um, the surplus that is uh, in the form of flour to share this, yeah, to export this to the global north so that, uh, you know, the Ukraine war, the Russia, everything, you know, we're really starting to see the fragility of our food system. Our food system is so fragile. It sucks, yeah? I mean, you know, one country that produces a lot of wheat goes to war with another country that produces a lot of fertilizer, and it's like, oh, my God, we're screwed. 20 million people are, are starving, and, you know, everybody in the United States and Canada is freaking out over the price of food. So we need better staples, yeah? So peach palm, I really believe, is one of those better staples. So let's see what we can do to get some investment into growing this crop because it is so amazing. High yield, high nutrition, no downside, can be grown in an agroforestry system. So let's go. All right. Thanks for watching that all the way to the end. I know that was a long one. I hope it was informative and educational. Um, if you're interested in anything that we're doing here, please go on over to our website, www.sdvforest.com. There are more details about the land for sale. There's tons of details about our agroforestry project, how we work, what we do, why we do it, how we're working with our local community. Uh, so please go on over there. My email, my WhatsApp, everything is on the website. If you're at all interested in getting in touch with me, please do so.